You know, I love to hate only, but he was a hell of a worker. <laughs> <You and me. laughs> I hated only. I couldn't stand that song. <laughs>
and that gentleman coming up to me. You know, but Manny, how yeah. hard is it for you to uh, digest the injustice and disrespect towards the Vietnam vet? I have a shirt um, that got presented to me by a few people. It says, Vietnam vet never again, never forgotten. And that means a lot. I won't wear it a lot of places because it affects, it affects, <laughs> it affects me differently. We're here with you, brother. Absolutely, man. God bless you, man. God bless you for sure. Mm. But it's I, I sit here with Manny. It's an honor, uh, you know, the sacrifices they make. I mean, not only do they go defend the country, but they let their their families are left behind. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's just uh, and, and 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 like you said, a lot of folks don't respect that the the sacrifices these guys have made, and and it, you know, to sit here with Manny, uh, you know, defended our country and and become a professional wrestler. I mean, he's had a full life, and and. He's told me a couple of stories, and it, 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 I'm getting goosebumps sitting here, mm. sitting here right now, just thinking about it. Did you, did you personally there. have some uh, bad experiences when you got back, rude treatment or anything like that? Or in California, it was horrible because that generation would was marching and putting down the Vietnam vets, baby killers, always having babies all bloodied up, signs of baby killers, mm. yeah. and all that because of that one incident mm -hmm. and stuff. In uh, mm -hmm. And my, my family all served in World War II. My uncles, my mom's side, fought in the Battle of Midway, and the big Battle of Midway in World War II. And, and I just got sick and tired of watching the protests and knowing that my family served. I decided not to take a scholarship to play football at UCLA and join the military. So wow. I ended up going. You know, my mom didn't want me to join the Marines because I wanted to go Marine, hardcore, you know, recon Marine and everything. And uh, she didn't want that, so... I joined the Navy to make her happy, <laughs> and then I got into Special Forces, right. UDT. <laughs> so you could have you could have taken the sports route. I went in in this underwater welding, and I took the underwater part to another extent. <laughs> 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 that was a bond in pro wrestling back in the day. That was a bond in the military. That was a bond with my team. We took we took each other to battle, and we came back home together. No matter what, we didn't leave nobody behind. That's the way pro wrestling was in the early days when we drove around in cars, going town to town, four guys in a car, yeah, yeah, having fun, coming back home, drinking, driving, getting crazy, mooning people, doing stupid stuff, <laughs> doing stupid stuff down the road, throwing beers at one another, <laughs> driving down the road, canning beers at each other. <laughs> what about race? Harder race, come up behind you with the lights off. off. 100 miles an hour, that come up, I didn't you, know how to drive. you in the ass yeah. in and start pushing you. Oh, I mean, God. you know, at Harley, yeah. yeah. I was in my Trans Am one day. We wrestled in Augusta, Georgia, and, and uh, I'd wrestled Harley, and he had a rental car. It's a station wagon, I think. I was in my Trans Am doing about 80. All of a sudden, I thought, something's wrong with his car. And Harley done got up on my ass and was pushing me with his headlights out. Mm. You know, I mean, just no... Just it was a brotherhood, it you know. Back in the day, yeah. you know, it it wasn't it wasn't. If I tell on this guy, I'm gonna get a bigger push, cause it didn't matter. We was all brothers, and, and I might have my shot, and then Manny'd have his shot. You know, he'd be here. We were no eagles. You know, yeah, it, it was, was business. It was business. business. We got paid by putting asses in the seats. seats. It, it, it was uh, one night I could be main event Harley Race, and next night I'd be opening match. And who cares? We are so cares? For, we are so fortunate to have two wrestlers. Wrestlers. I ask you guys both. Uh, we've heard a lot of Harley Race today. Is Harley Race the wrestlers wrestler? Yeah, there's so yeah. many of the, the but, but, but we had so many of those guys. Yeah, uh, Terry Harley Funk. Was, the, the, you know, the, funks, I mean, the funks. There was Dory Funk and Terry Funk, night and day. I called him night and day because Dory was so scientific. <laughs> he, he'd be in the short arm scissors for like six hours. <laughs> One hole for six hours. You get up, get down. But but it was but the never people boring. Buying it, the though. people bought it, right, Tommy? Yeah, they get so excited every time he would move a muscle. Oh, and it would be one stupid hole. For yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a rest hold. What's the problem? You know, now I think it's more like 
they just out for each other. They, they, I, for and, themselves. Yeah, they, yeah. I mean, and, and I may be wrong. Maybe they are brotherhood. But the stories I hear, you know, I, I well, don't know. I really doubt they're traveling the road with their rental cars up and down the way you oh, guys yeah. did. I really doubt that. So yeah. you oh, guys no, had... no. Sometimes we travel in our own cars, you know. What I'm saying? But the fun part about the old days is we would take turns. Who would drive that day? He'd drive his car. So we wouldn't put a lot of miles on our cars because we had four guys on four different cars, and one day it would be Tommy's turn to drive. The next day it would be my turn to drive. The next day it would be Sam's Sam day to drive. The next day it would be Ola's day to drive. So we all had different cars at different times, and, and, and we had young, fun. Young guys, I mean, it's, it's almost like dancing. You know, one leads and one follows. Mm. And and we had some of the greatest leaders in the world. Oh, my God. Mm. You know, the Briscoes, yep. I mean, Black Jack, uh, King Cole, Oli, Oli and Gene. You know, you know, I love to hate Oli, but he was a hell of a worker. <laughs> you and me, I hated Oli. I couldn't stand that song. I, I, I love Gene Anderson. No, oh, I Gene was Gene. good. Good, yeah. good, good. Remember, he's a tougher from me. Oh, he was, and, and Gene. Bless his heart, he had a nerve bad. And he didn't remember he'd have to sling his arm. He'd sling his arm up on the wall to to prop it up, you know what I mean? But that's what we did and then Gene, he Gene had that Gene had that twist. Gene Anderson is so damn tough. Oh brother, when I we used to do promos at Woodline for W uh, Mid Atlantic, stuff like that, and I'd get all mad at Rick Flair, start cussing Rick Flair. Gene Anderson grabbed me by the thumb and pull that thumb out. Oh Gene! Gene, please, please. <laughs> you better be quiet, leave that boy alone. I said, okay, Gene, I'll leave him alone, leave him alone. <laughs> Manny, did you get along with Rick Flair? Like Hell personally? No. Hell's no. no. Hell do no. tell. Do Hell tell. No. I never get along with that idiot. Really? <laughs> one, time, one time, the greatest time was Ooh. me and Wahoo were mad because Crockett got pissed off at Wahoo and fined us. From now on, when you guys get upset, we're going to find you, deduct you some pain. Uh -oh. <laughs> right? So we got, and Crockett was in the office, and Flair and Crockett come out together, and Wahoo turned around and says, Hey, Crockett, don't turn the corner too fast. You might break Flair's nose. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he got fired too, didn't he? <laughs> Both of you worked with Gordon Soley. Oh, what, so oh, tell us, is. tell us what you both thought about oh, Gordon Soley. Oh, this is, go, go ahead, man. Go ahead. The, when I left uh, Amarillo, I started off in Amarillo. J.J. Dillon was there with the Booker with the Murdoch and them, and they Terry and them said, the "Kid's good enough. Let's send him to Eddie Graham." And if you knew any stories about Eddie Graham. Eddie Graham was the man. You got sent to Eddie Graham, you better show your wares and you better be tough because Eddie Graham was one tough old promoter and tough in the ring. And he wanted, if you got recommended by somebody, you better show what you had and you better be good at it. So <laughs> they sent me to Florida. I go to Florida and I showed up at the office like they told me with my bag in my hand. You don't go nowhere without that bag, boy. <laughs> So I bag in the office, I opened the door, and there's a guy about 90 years old, old Charlie Lay. Remember Charlie, Charlie Lay? Lay? Yes, I did. Charlie Lay wrestled in the 30s, in the 30s, the 20s, or 30s, something like that. And he said, I said, I'm here to report. Uh, my name's Manny from the He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. But wait a minute. You go, go through this corner here and out here, go in that studio out there. I go out there in that studio, and there's a guy sitting on the desk like you guys are doing. And I walked up and I introduced myself because that's what I was taught you to do. You go up and introduce you. My name is, always introduce yourself to everyone. That's respect. And I said, he said, well, I'm going to Sully. I went, whoo! Oh! Eight o'clock in the morning. A <laughs> hundred poop, bro. That was a hundred poop. I was like, whoa! <laughs> I you, he asked me to take him to the airport, <laughs> airport one time. And, uh, was he crocked all the time? Hell yeah. Much. Was me he? And him, me and him puffed peace pipe on the way there. Gordon airport. Soley <laughs> smoked weed? Gordon Soley smoked weed? Wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm oh. tooting in my 14-year-old oh. virgin ass and he's high? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Gordon rocks. That's oh, great. Gordon, I'm going to tell you. Gordon was rock. Gordon, oh, Gordon I mean, and... and like Florida, I mean, he Gordon was the mouthpiece for Florida, and Georgia, Georgia, absolutely, and, and absolutely he could, and he just his his style. I mean, there's been great commentators. Don't get me wrong, 
But to me, Gordon, Gordon oh, there's no Gordon. Like, like I like Lance Russell out of Memphis. Was he was, he's Stan like Hood. country, where Gordon was like, you know, just yeah. he'd say he stuff. He'd say stuff, and I think, is that even a real word? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, Gordon to me, he says, "Well, come over, kid. I said, sit next to me." So I sit next to him. He says, "You're gonna have to go in there and get dressed." He go get, get dressed. He says, "Yeah, they want you to get suited up, kid." So I, get, I got. So I said, "Well, okay." I went to the dressing room, the TV dressing room. I got all dressed, came back out, sat next to Gordon. He goes. You're going to be all right, kid. Don't worry about nothing. So I'm looking at him going like, what the hell are you going to do here? <laughs> what the hell are you going to do here? And they came down the stairs. I see this big, big fat guy in blonde hair with Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> and the guy behind, <laughs> behind him was... <laughs> Behind him was Eddie Graham. He come down, and I look over at Gordon. He's got this big grin from ear to ear, and he's laughing like crazy. And then here come Jack and Jerry Briscoe down the street. Briscoe's had some, yeah. Oh damn! You know Jack was two-time national collegiate. Jack, yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Jerry was one time. Oh yeah. Yep. And they said, "You got your gear." I said, "Yeah." And they, Jack and Jerry got in the ring. I said, "Oh." I know what's going to happen now. <laughs> and I turned around and that Gordon never stopped laughing. Oh. And that's how I got along. He was so great with me. And then I got through getting stressed. <laughs> Twist I, fought back. I fought back a little yeah. bit. So, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It risked both of them. I mean, Jerry yeah. was tough, too. I mean, but Jerry, I can't imagine. Jack. Both. Oh, yeah. Jack. Oh, yeah. Jack was so good, I called him choke. Everything I tried, he just shoo shoo. Next thing I do, I was on my back. Shoo shoo, he's on my back. I said, God damn. I got, Jerry got mad at me because I took him down. He wanted to do fights, and we jumped up, and I put my fist up, and I went to hit him, and Dusty yelled, hey! And so I stopped, right? And I told Jerry, I said, dude, do you want to go with these? I'll go with them. You're going to lose. <laughs> and then That's Dusty awesome. said, Eddie Graham, and, and Gordon goes, I think the kid's all right. <laughs> He's going to make it. He's going to make it. <laughs> so you, you guys mentioned Dusty Rhodes, right? So, you know, Cody Rhodes is kind of the big thing that's going on right oh, yeah. now. Yep, yep. Uh, we've had so, again, we've had so many greats like yourselves in here, and there's such a split decision on Dusty Rhodes. What was your opinion on Dusty Rhodes? Was, was he about himself all? All the time, or yeah. was he? You know, what? Are, what are your guys' is, thoughts? Is he great? He, Dusty was great, great. but it, he I mean, great. Dusty, Dusty. I mean, Dusty was about Dusty, but okay. but if he seen you could draw money, I mean, he he put you with he him. He was smart. Yeah, he put you with him. Did <laughs> Dusty put money in your pockets? Well, he was smart, like Tommy said. Look, Dusty had the greatest charisma in the world. Absolutely, yeah. greatest charisma in the world. Oh, he could yeah. talk. He could talk a man Walk out the of charts. out of Eskimo out of ice, brother. Right. He had the greatest mouth, everything charisma. Yep. Dusty had a mind for this business, but eventually, that mind burned the business. He burned the territories, and I noticed that in Florida because when I started getting to the point where in Florida that I was hot selling out everywhere, Dusty always wanted to be next to me. And the young guy, like being with Tommy when he was in Atlanta. Hell, he come at Atlanta and be with it. Tom. Like in Sean, Tom. he did it with Ricky and Robert, too. Yeah, and Magnum yeah. PA. So Magnus. if yeah. Dusty saw yeah. somebody getting over, he just yeah. attaches his hip. Yeah, he doesn't want you to get over him. The okay. thing with Dusty was, okay. that was his ego. It's all but about But isn't Dusty. that smart? Well, that's how you burn the business down. After a while, you know, okay. it's unbelievable. Okay. And, you know, and, and that's why Eddie Graham in Florida, when the Florida Territory, when I got to Florida... It was the hottest territory with Atlanta, the two hottest territories yeah. ever. Oh, yeah. You oh, made yeah. money. Yep. And it, it, the industry stayed there, stayed there. Too many ma matches with Harley Race. And then pretty soon, when Dusty and Har would meet Harley, nobody was showing up. They did the last tango in Tampa at T Tampa Bay Stadium, and less than 10,000 people showed up. Mm. It looked empty as hell in that stadium. That's a problem. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it just got to the point that Eddie couldn't take it no more. So Dusty went elsewhere. The greatest compliment I ever got in pro wrestling on my bike when when I finally released my book, which I don't really want to do, but a lot of people want me to do it, is because the stories that I'm telling you about the people do about it. me and yeah. Jack Briscoe when when he did the quote on my book, the devotion or whatever they call that, mm -hmm. he said they said, can you please tell us about Manny Fernandez for his book? He said one word, natural. Period. Mm. You know, Manny, I've heard I've heard from many people that you. And Tommy too. You guys could work like you guys were true, true Damn. workers. Damn. I've asked you this, Tommy, before. I'm gonna ask you this, Manny. Was your ultimate was at the time when you guys were wrestling? Was the WWE or WWF at the time the place you really wanted to go to, or did it not matter? It didn't matter to me. Why? 
I didn't want to go. I didn't like Vince. And uh, Tommy went. Tommy no, I went. no, I never worked for no. Vince. I, I went one time, for, but I went for senior. I went oh. for the Mr. Barnett told me, he says, Tommy, my boy, you just got to go yeah. to Madison Square Garden so one did time. Yeah. And, and so I, I worked one time, but that, I never was around the sun. Yeah. What's the matter? You didn't like the fast food? <laughs> Tommy, I mean, what made you go back <laughs> to Georgia? Yeah, Funny it. story. Barnett told me work one time, and the, the, the Barnett said the same thing. Boy, I love I really that boy, Mac Fernandez. I really like that boy. I like to get him down to Georgia. And Eddie yeah. Graham said, "No, he's here." Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I did the Bayfront, and Mr. Barnett, he would go down and yeah. watch. He would go to Florida and watch the show because yeah. it was just it was back then. It was exciting. I mean, it yeah. wasn't. But what choreographed? Was the, w, my, just, was the WWF like a joke to you guys? I'm just curious no, as to how you really, guys looked at it. We never really came a joke. There. We just southern. Red, we just no redneck boys. Yeah, yeah. but my, my question. Wait, but, but you I, know what? Our territory was even better. Why would I leave a territory? Or oh, he leaves so Atlanta, which was hot as hell. Carolina, we started getting hot as hell. When I came in, when Dusty brought me in from Texas, he brought me in. We started getting heat. And then when Wahoo was healed and I was baby, it started coming up. And why would I want to leave, or Tommy want to leave, when we're making the same amount of money they're making, and we're more comfortable? Well, uh, but just where we're at. just being in the profession of wrestling, right? So you're you're playing like in the Omni or in Tampa, ten thousand people. You guys had to see the films of Madison Square Garden, which was twenty six thousand raging fans. WrestleMania as won, a rest, WrestleMania well, forget about two, WrestleMania, right yeah, back that's then. That's while but still that's, very that's but after that's us, after that. You no, know, I mean. But we, my point but is, are you looking and going, you know? man? I. I know I'm making the same money here, but I I just want to play in front of twenty six thousand people and feel what that is. That didn't that didn't play at all, huh? Well, when we became WCW, we went over there anyway. We sold out yeah. the arenas here. And, yeah. And, and, I mean, and uh, what is the stadium? In the football stadium, I forget the damn. They knocked it down by now. So, where the Giants play with Meadowlands, the Meadowlands. Right. We went to right. Meadowlands. Yeah. We did, yeah. we did right. forty thousand people. Hey. You and know? what was that like coming from a ten thousand? It was like, oh my god, I can't the believe it. The Omni held what sixteen thousand? Yeah, the Omni. I mean, the Omni you gotta think, so the Omni was your South, Madison Square yeah. Garden, basically. Omni, yeah, the Omni, awesome. but they had the Bayfront. The Bayfront Bay was big. Big. Uh, the Charlotte, Charlotte Coliseum yeah, was Charlotte, big. I mean, we, I mean, had, we had the Richmond maybe not twenty six thousand sitting there, but but Project. we was packing them out. You know, yeah, the army to me out. was like George's Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah. And you know? then when you went to the, the Virginia, you had Hampton Coliseum, you had the North Fork Scope. Those were big venues where the big basketball teams would play. They they draw sure. big college sure. basketball, big. You guys know that they're big over there. So did you did you not like the McMahon so many? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't block. Let him. Let it out. This man is the biggest turd on the planet. Dude. Why? <laughs> damn turd. I You're think blocking, if, man. Hey, You're blocking. If, there you <laughs> if there was a dog big enough in this world that thought he could turd Vince McMahon, he probably wouldn't want to do it because he'd probably pollute the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. Hey, why Manny, do you feel that way, though, yeah. Manny? Seriously. He, why do you, feel? He, you know what he does to people? He tries to humiliate people. He wants them to be what he wants them to be, you know. If you know, if I'm gonna be the Rage Bull, who's gonna put horns on my head? Oh no! You ain't that kind of man. Oh, I'm not that desperate of a man. Did he ever contact you? Yeah. yeah. You, what happened? You gotta remember, me and Rick Rude were the hottest tag team around. Yeah, yeah. 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 Me and Rick Rude yeah. were the hottest tag team at one Reed time Reed. Be right. because. We had battles with Rock and Roll Express. Okay. Yeah. And Ricky okay. and Robert were dynamite, weren't they, Tom? Yes, sir. Another yeah. team that never saw Dynamite and a little package, okay. brother. Okay. And then you got the honor to work those two. You took care of them like they were cuddly little babies. Does Pat Patterson, <laughs> does Pat Patterson call Manny Fernandez? Who called you? Did WWE call yeah. you? I mean, So they contacted us, and it, it, me and Rude had a conversation, and I was just... New York just, Vince McMahon just rubbed me wrong, something about that. Okay. I didn't like the way he treated people and tried to make them, you know, in his image. Right. I go, I, yeah, my mom didn't raise a fool, she raised a man. Manny, tell yeah. me about the person, Rick Root. Mm. Oh. To me, it was the most beautiful person I met in a long time in the business. And I met a lot of great people in this business. But Ran I'm around the roads with some, traveled up and down the roads. Tommy people. seems to agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. He, he, when, when he was, I was in Atlanta with him some, and he was, yeah, Rick was really good people. Yeah. Dusty, here's Dusty's mind, right? Rick Rude was in Memphis working with, with uh, Lawler, yeah. and Lawler, he, he, Rick was stiff. 
He was still breaking in. He was still kind of green. He was sniffing like, oh boy, I knew he'd get to the cold lines. I'd so, winch. <laughs> I'd say, oh my God. <laughs> right? So Dusty thought, I was in Dusty's doghouse. I had gotten in trouble. Me and Dusty just broke up from the World Tag Team title deal. And I was out there fighting in bars, getting in trouble and stuff. I get, you know, Doug Dillinger was our cop. They worked for <laughs> Dillinger. Yeah. He Doug was a Dillinger. sergeant. Oh he was God. a cop that Crockett used because he worked for Charlie yeah. PD. And he'd always have to come get me out of jail. <laughs> so I was always getting in trouble and he'd come save me, right? But I'd have to go in the office and Dusty yell at me or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, dude. You know, I'm still going to live my life. So I was in Dusty's doghouse and Rick Rude came in from Memphis. And they didn't really know what to do with him. They didn't know what to do with me either because I was in the doghouse. So Dusty came up with the idea, well... Put those two together, they probably won't work out. At least we'll have someone here. <laughs> <And> <laughs> the then, biggest mistake they ever made. Right. <laughs> that team clicked so good. It rude. And, and I told them one time we sat down, I said, you know how they're doing this, right? They don't think it can work. They think they, they've seen you and they see how stiff you are when you jerk guys down the mat. <laughs> they don't think it can work yet. They still think you're green. So they think that I'm going to teach you how to work. I said, they, if you want to listen to me, you listen to me. If you don't, you don't. That's up to you. He listened to every word I said. <laughs> every word I said. Every word I said. And we worked so good. All night, we was in Philadelphia. We had rock and roll on the Broadway, one hour Broadway for the World Tag Team title. Me and Ricky Morton went 47 minutes. Him and Robert went about <laughs> five minutes of beach. <laughs> and we were in the ring. I got back. I was so damn tired, boy. I got back and dressed up and said, Rick, brother. And Ricky Morton was complaining too. He goes, damn, boy, we worked this whole match. <laughs> I go, Rick, brother, <laughs> you got to help me out here. You got to stay in a little bit longer. You said, oh, wait a minute. Remember what Dusty said? You're the worker. I'm the gimmick. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. Well, who, McDaniel, can you elaborate a little bit on your relationship with him and some of those matches? Um, first time we worked each other, I respected him all because he was a crazy-ass Indian. <laughs> he'd get on that fire water, he'd fight. Hey, he'd fight King Kong and break him down. He's a pretty big dude, too, right? Yeah, Let's yeah. Like, get that out of the way. Wow, well, he was a big tough, dude. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. And a jet, <laughs> a former New York <laughs> jet, <laughs> might, I, yep. might I add. And uh, yep. we had Matt. He was here on baby face, and so we had some great matches. And he was just, his chops were ferocious. Oh, what's the My God, they were, it was like a razor cut in your chest. Boom. So my forearms was back, and so we got used to just beating the living crap out of each other, and, and the people bought those hardcore matches, and we loved it because he didn't complain. He didn't and complain. they weren't really hardcore matches. That's just the way they yeah, were. They beat out of each it other. ain't no bomb bar. These yeah. two guys yeah. out there just, yeah, just you know, I mean, chopping, yeah. chopping, and you see blood come up or big yeah. wheel, you know. Yeah. Not no, you know, I mean, they were, you know. No just, Orange Cassidy's. No little orange guys. <laughs> yeah, no hands in the pockets, no 140-pound uh, tennis instructors, so okay? It, okay. See, yeah. I broke <laughs> Wahoo's nose twice yeah. with the flying burrito. <laughs> I, I overjudged it and got him in the nose twice. He broke my nose four times with a drop in the tomahawk, and it was just paybacks. You see, that's the kind of words in the old days. It was, okay, you tatered me. Well, here's one back. So there was nothing said about it. It's all. You broke my nose, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what were you going to do about it, right? Just put that out. But no, those were, Wahoo was one of the greatest wrestlers to me uh, that probably ever laced him up to. Yeah. yeah. One of the most toughest individuals.